Hello my art loving friends. Today is a very exciting video because we have happy mail in today's video and we're going to incorporate this happy mail into our already existing watercolor collection. It's going to be so much fun. Right here is the happy mail. It's so fun. And you guys did see the bag, the little art bag that I received as a birthday present from one of you. I featured that already in a previous video, so I didn't want to repeat it for you guys. But anyway, this is the new stuff. And these were so generously gifted to me at Christmas and my birthday. They're the same day. My birthday's on Christmas by some of you guys. And I just want to say thank you. It really touches me that you guys would think of me at such a busy time of year. So thank you. I'm so grateful and um, it just it brought tears to my eyes. I just have to tell you I was really touched. Okay, enough emotional stuff. Let's get into the goodies. So this, we'll start with this. It's so cute. A hand-painted thank you card by one of my students. So this was not through YouTube. It's one of my absolute favorite students. She has such a fun personality and I just love having her in class. So she saw this cute little watercolor palette and thought of me and wanted me to have that. And it's so cute. So I think just for fun, we absolutely have to paint with this palette at some point. So we will do that. I'll probably use my own brush, however, because I think that brush would be impossible to paint with. <laughs> How fun is that? And you could even spray the top of that with the appliance epoxy, which I did find. It was in a different place than I would have expected. Finally found that so I can finish up some other projects I have going around here. And you could take this and use this. Once this paint was gone or you pushed it out, you could even squeeze in your own paint, use professional paint or something. So that was awesome. How cute, huh? And hand-painted card, I love that. <laughs> and this was a gift from one of you, also one of my Patreon supporters, so thank you very much. This is the Etcher sketchbook. It's the 230 GSM one, so it's not the perfect sketchbook, which I've never tried the perfect sketchbook, but this is one I didn't have, and I'm very excited because this is the portrait orientation, and I am really excited to have this, so thank you so much. I'm not gonna open it yet. I have a couple of other sketchbooks I'm trying to finish first, and I want this to stay sealed, so hopefully the sizing inside will, you know, stay as friendly as possible. <laughs> So this is precious. It's going on my sketchbook shelf over there and I will be pulling this out as soon as I finish up some others. And then this was the latest gift that I received from one of you. Thank you. Also one of my Patreon supporters. It's so, so sweet. I just cannot believe you guys send me stuff. Thank you again. <laughs> Another hand-painted card. And this was painted with some gouache that I sent her actually. So how cute is that? I love the little details on the roses. I don't know if you can see those little highlights. They're so good. And what she did is send me some half pans in this cute little palette of colors that she didn't think I had, or maybe, maybe she said was missing. She wasn't sure from some of my sets. And all of these, except this last one here, are White Nights paints. And this last one here is an Imgram Anthroquinone Blue, which I do not have. So we'll get into these in a little bit more detail in a minute. And she sent me an Etcher accordion sketchbook. Now I have some accordion sketchbooks from Etcher, but they're the tiny ones. So I am so excited to have the big one. And what is nice about the Etcher accordion sketchbooks that are a little bit different than some of the others. Let me just go grab one actually. Let me move this to the side so the studio lights don't glare at you. But here is one of the small Etcher accordion sketchbooks. And what I like about that is this one is it just seems to, like the pages tend to lay flatter. I don't know if their folds are more precise or what, but I have only ever used the Hanamule accordion sketchbook before. And this one just seems a little bit different. A little more precise maybe? I'm not sure. But this is supposed to be their cold pressed paper, but it is very smooth. However, I'm pretty sure this is the back side of the paper, because that's the back side of the sketchbook. It's really, really smooth, but the front side has a little bit of texture, but it is a lot smoother than their sketchbooks, which is interesting because this says that it is the 100% cotton paper, 230 GSM, which is the same as their sketchbooks, if I'm remembering correctly. Don't quote me on that. But anyway, it's a lot different feeling than their sketchbook paper. Their sketchbook paper has like a, like that cotton feel that catches your fingers, you know, when you rub across it. But this is all very smooth. So 
it'll be very interesting to see how this pans out. Oh, look, a little seam. <laughs> so I have the little one and I am really excited to try the big one. I am still trying to figure out other than my 15 minute painting marathon, what accordion sketchbooks are good for. I do like the kind of scene that continues idea. So I may do that, but I'm also going to keep this in the wrapping for now until I know I'm gonna use it because I'm already afraid about this one and it's sizing because I've had it for quite a while now, probably close to a year. I've never shown it on the channel because it just didn't seem important, but <laughs> anyway, we'll see. So yes, thank you. This will be so much fun. I kind of just want to open it and see if the paper is exactly the same feel as this. It says it's all the same on the front, but I'm going to resist. I'm going to leave it in its plastic for now. Let's take a look at the paint that was sent to me. Wow, I cannot tell you how excited I am to receive paint. What is it about little pans of paint? Oh, they're so fun. Far as I can tell, she was watching my videos about White Knights and thought I didn't have some of these colors. And she's right, I don't have some of them. This set here is the little 12 set and this does have three of the colors. The sepia, Payne's Grace, and oh, four of the colors. Indian Gold, Sap Green, Sepia, and Payne's Grace. So I have that in this set, but this set is complete and it can't fit any more paint in it anyway. So we're, we're gonna just put that set aside because that's not important. <laughs> but this set, Right here is the set that was sent to me. I think I paid for this one, but it's from Kimberly Crick. I paid for some of the stuff she sent me and she gifted some of the rest and I didn't keep that straight in my mind and it really doesn't matter. But anyway, none of the colors she sent me do I have in this palette. So I thought I should add them to this palette. And this was also in my undone drawer. If you saw me talk about that in the last video, I have this drawer where things are like in progress and you can tell that this swatch sheet is not laminated. I don't know why, maybe I just left this whole palette undone because these needed to be put in the window for light fast testing, I'm not sure, but I'll figure it out eventually. But it's nice that this is not laminated yet because I can add these new colors onto here very easily. Okay, so we're going to carefully dump those out. And she labeled them with these little sticky labels, which is such a good idea because then you could write flat on the ground that would be a table and not have to worry about trying to use a Sharpie on half pans of the plastic. Anyway, that's great that they're labeled because they don't have to guess what they are. Let's see if I can get this final one out. There we go. So we have a Payne's Gray and I could, I don't want to like move where they are on this swatch sheet. So they're going to be a little out of order from what I'm used to, but I could just put the Payne's Gray right here. Okay. The sepia. Ah, okay. So we could do sepia and then Payne's gray here. Nice and snug. We will see what these colors look like here in a minute, but for now, let's just do what we're doing. Green and chromium oxide. So I've only tried chromium oxide in a gallo now. So I'm going to be really curious to see what this one looks like. Chromium oxide and green. I mean, I guess we don't really have a choice. They should go here, except we do have one more sap green. Really, I want to move these, but I don't want to redo my swatch sheet. <laughs> so what we could do is move these two down here next to the metallics. Then we'll put perylene violet up there. Actually, I'm so confused. Indian gold. Oh, that's going to be pretty. Hmm. Okay, so let's put the perylene violet there, the Indian gold over here next to the Indian yellow. This palette is gonna be all out of order, but that's okay because we have the swatch sheet to tell us where everything is. Then I want to do choices, choices. I think I'm going to do the chromium oxide next to the olive green, and I'll put the sap green next to that, and the green down here. Okay and we will deal with this anthroquinone blue here shortly, but not yet. We have other things to do first. Okay, I'm just gonna jump all in on the order I just put these in here. <laughs> may regret it later, may redo this swatch sheet at some point, but I'm not redoing it right now. I'm just debating if I should put some water down here like I sometimes do or not, and I guess I will. Just a little bit anyway. At least get the paper wet. I have my salt ready. So this first one is the Perylene Violet PV29. Ooh, that's a pretty color and that was a good spot for it. I expected it to be more purple. I'm just, I'm not that familiar with Perylene Violet, so 
If you're like, no, that's the color it always is, well, yeah, great. <laughs> you know more than me about the Paraline Violets. It's because I don't have one. Not in this brand. I probably have one in the uh, Daniel Smith that was sent to me because I have a lot of those lovely paints. Paraline Violet, done. Next we have, well, that one's supposed to be Indian Gold, but we're going to let that dry. So we'll scooch down to the Chromium Oxide. Get a little more pigment. Yeah, so it's reminiscent of the A Gallo, but it paints, the first initial feel feels more transparent than the A Gallo, but A Gallo is also really highly pigmented, so that could be part of the difference I'm feeling, but it, it does seem a little bit different. It's very pretty. I actually really like this color so far. Let's see what it looks like when it dries. Nothing below that, but down here, I guess we could put this one up there. Should we put sepia up there? I think so. Yeah, we're gonna scooch sepia up one. I know it's off screen, you can't see what I'm doing, but take my word for it. Okay, here's sepia. I'm so excited for this one. Ooh, that's a pretty sepia. So it could definitely be a dark brown replacement in any of your palettes. That's pretty. I'm gonna get some more mass tone going here. Hopefully it dries that pretty. We can do this one down here on the corner. Get some of the salt out of the way. Okay, and this one is the Paints Gray. Usually one of my favorite colors. Nice so far. Deep and dark, slightly blue-purple tinted, which I love. Tiny bit more. And some salt. Well, wet, that's a beautiful color. Okay, we're gonna let these dry before we do the rest of them. So I'm gonna turn you off for a minute. Those are all dry. So let's move on. This one's going to be really fun to see because it's a color that I kind of like a lot. Indian Gold, PY150 and PR101. Here we go. Ta-da! Ooh, that's so pretty. Wow, it lightens up into this beautiful color. Get a little more mass tone at the top. So this next one is going to be Sap Green. PY150, PG36, PBK7. Here we go. Ooh, I like this Sap Green. Some Sap Greens are just not what I think of as a Sap Green in watercolor, but this one is spot on, at least in the wet form. We'll see how light it dries. So this one is just green, called green, and it's PG8. Oh, okay, nice. Oh man, got into my cobalt turquoise. I could see both of these greens being useful in things that I paint anyway. In the meantime, we'll set this aside and let's look at our M. Graham palette here because we have a color to add to it. This always sticks to, I have a couple of Sennelier paints that were just loosely put in there in a watercolor retreat I went to. So this is my M. Graham palette, but these up here are Sennelier. So I need to get in here and use those up. I need to make a point of that so they don't just stay in here forever. So this was the M. Graham set of 10 colors that were the Mind of Water color selection and I made my own Convenience Red and Convenience Green to fill up the 12 slots in this palette. And this Anthraquinone Blue needs to go in here because this is where I keep my imp grams. And I can't put it here because then the palette doesn't shut. So I'd like to have it by the blues, but it does shut if I put it over here. I can keep it in the half pan that way. And I'll just grab some Uhu Tack and just smoosh it down. So let me go grab that. I actually changed my mind about the Uhu Tack because this palette is pretty flat when you shut it to start with. <laughs> See, pretty flat. For example, there's a half pan, so it doesn't have a whole lot of extra space here. Instead of doing the Uhu Tack, which will make this quite a bit thicker on the bottom, I'm going to use my score tape. It's double-sided tape and it's very strong. Peel the sticky off. I know I accidentally got these overlapped on each other, which is lovely. I don't know how I want it. I guess like that. Put this information out where I can see it. That would be good. Sticky, sticky, stick. 
closes beautifully. Now this swatch sheet is laminated, obviously, as you can see, but I can just add the little swatch over the top right here. So let's grab some scrap paper and see what this beautiful blue looks like. This is Arches paper. Let's do some water on the subject here. Brush has some green in it, so maybe we should start over. Typical M. Graham rewets beautifully. All that honey. Oh, that is a pretty color. And it moves nicely in the water. Get some more on there. Just make this a nice big wide swatch, including all the cat hair and some salt. And we'll let that dry and then I'll just stick it on here for now. It's all dry and I stuck it onto this swatch sheet with the same double-sided sticky tape from Score or Score Tape. What is the brand? I guess it is Score Tape. Distributed by Score Pal. So now I have a fully accurate swatch card here and it's not laminated or anything. And I do have this other paint up there that's very sticky. Thanks, Sennelier. <laughs> so I do need to be careful when I put this away because all the paint in here is sticky. Because if I put it like this, it's gonna go right into that red. I may just grab a piece of scotch tape for now and stick over that. In fact, I think I will before I shut this, just regular invisible scotch tape. And then it'll be like it's laminated, right? These are all dry and I labeled them. I don't have all the information on them, but I can go look them up on the internet and fill that in later. So now I have a very complete White Knights palette with only room for one more half pan. <laughs> well, there's just nothing quite as fun as Happy Mail and adding new colors to a watercolor palette. That's one of my most favorite things to do. That and swatching is just relaxing, completely stress-free. Thank you for the gifts. I really appreciate them. I'm excited to get into those accordion sketchbooks at some point in the future. I hope you have a fun watercolor filled weekend and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. I do have some of these in a random set, but we'll talk about that in another video. No, we're not. We're going to talk about it in this video. Hold that thought. Why talk about it when you can show it, right? I had a feeling that one was going to be too big. <laughs> Uh, totally ruined that piece of tape. Do over. That straight would be good. And the scissors keep sticking to the tape. Well, we don't need to have all this on camera, but whatever. All right. Ah, ah, ah. Dang it. That's not where I wanted it.